and welcome back. My next guest is a YouTube musician. She just released a new song called Where Do We Go From Here. Ladies and gentlemen, this is my conversation with Anne Reburn. Hello, Anne. Hi. Thanks how are for you having today? me. Doing well. How are you? I'm doing not, not too bad. Not too bad. Before we really get into everything, uh, you and I actually have something pretty cool in common. Uh, you're from um, Omaha, Nebraska. I was. I was born in Omaha. Yeah. Wow. Uh, so if you don't mind me asking, like, why not anymore? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have control over it. So I did live in Omaha for the first two-ish years of my life. But then um, at that point, my family had to move for work and they moved to Oklahoma because that's where the job was. And that's where I ended up growing up and uh, also went to college in Oklahoma. So um, it was it was out of my control. So if you went to college in Oklahoma, that, that, that makes you not a Husker fan, doesn't it? I am a Sooners fan, <laughs> but I, I'll, I, I'll allow it, you know, because I <laughs> yeah, I that birthplace I don't care about connection. the football thing, so I don't care about the football thing. doesn't hurt me, but that's um, really cool. So have you been back to Omaha, like, ever since you guys moved back out? I have a couple times. Uh, the most recent one was a couple years ago when there was a family friend of my parents' um, wedding to go to. So that was really fun because I got to actually see the city as an adult where, I, you know, when you're younger, your memories aren't right, aren't like fully formed. So it's different. Like after you after you learn how to drive, for example, you just see things and you orient yourself in a different way. Right. So I did get to go back. I saw, um, is it Market Street? Uh, the old market. Called? Yes. Yeah. The old market. Yeah. And um, visiting some of my parents' favorite, old favorite restaurants and stuff like that. So yeah, it, it was nice. Uh, it was a really nice visit. Nice. Uh, do you remember any of the restaurants you went to by chance? They had um, one of their favorites was an Indian restaurant. I don't remember what it was called. And then they also love M's Pub. Okay, I don't know. I don't. I don't know about the Indian restaurant, but I have heard of the other one mm -hmm. uh, before. Did you um, go to the zoo by chance when you were here? Not the most recent time, but there was a previous trip when I was younger, maybe a um, teenager or. 12 13 something like that that I did go to the zoo and I remember it being awesome and I remember that it was huge yeah they actually honestly if, if you come back anytime the next few years or whatever it's probably honestly way bigger than you remembered because we um well for one we actually just got named number one zoo in America like just recently and awesome. number two is like for the first time, I think they said for the first time in 12 years, uh, the zoo is not under construction. So it's like, as of right now, it's done. But no, they improved. They, they're always improving and it really looks awesome now. It's probably like 100% different than when you last left it. I'm sure it is. Yeah, I would love to go back. I do remember hearing like that it's an amazing zoo so it's cool to hear that it's number one that's awesome. yeah yeah i mean they added i mean you had to pay for it but they added like a stingray beach where you can like feed stingray and stuff now and yeah it's pretty cool um so something i wanted to ask about is you just posted recently um on your instagram and i think it was tiktok too uh you just did you just recently move into a new apartment that's like from the 1920s <laughs> Yeah, um, that apartment is actually the apartment that my partner is living in right now. So uh, okay. it is, according to the landlord, remodeled 1920s, and it has some quirks. Yeah. Yeah, I, I was like, I mean, like, that was a really funny, like, odd video, especially with the wall outlet, like, on the ceiling, pretty much, and stuff. But I know. I, 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 <laughs> I would think like within the last like 100 years, they would have been like, we should change this. You would think so, because obviously they redid some of the wiring. Right. You can tell because of the false ceiling, 
there weren't originally overhead lights at all. So they obviously redid something there. You would think that when they remodeled the bathroom, they could have just moved the outlet down a little right. bit. Right. Um, because as of right now, the only way I can reach it is by standing on the toilet and like reaching over the sink <laughs> to, pl- to plug it in like that. So uh, not the safest. Not the yeah, safest. Yeah, I see like... That's, that's just so weird because so a couple of years ago, I don't know if you heard about this or not, but a couple of years ago, um, like almost like all of Nebraska just like flooded from all the snow and stuff and melted so fast. And we have a family cabin and like the, cam- the family cabin got flooded. And um, I think we got like two or three feet of water in the cabin. And when they redid the um, electrical stuff, they like put it like up higher. So it's not like they can't move it. Like... <laughs> No, you can, you can definitely, they yeah. definitely could have moved it. That is a lot of water though. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was an interesting summer project. We literally did the entire thing. Like the outside was like the only okay part, but all of the inside we had to redo. It was nuts. Um, so one thing, and I heard this and I can't, forgive me if I get the song wrong. I think I was listening to your music this morning when I was at the gym um, just to, you know get myself hyped and i think it was like in the song this track there's like a verse that's like in spanish isn't there there's a couple lines in spanish in that song yeah yeah so are you fluent in spanish then um i do speak spanish i learned as an adult though um so it's very much a second language okay gotcha so what made you learn Spanish as an adult? In college, um, my major required us to have a minor. So I decided to minor in Spanish. I thought it would be useful and it has been, um, but I, I studied throughout college and um, learned the basics. And then in my last semester of school, I decided to do a study abroad program. So. Oh. When I got to Spain, um, it was a bit of a struggle at first. There was was a lot of words that I had never seen before um, because it's a different variety than what I learned. And throughout the course of that year, thankfully, that that was when I made major improvements moving towards fluency. And uh, I'm still still improving, though, still learning new words. And um, I think it'll always be that way. Right. Um, So one thing I'm kind of curious about is I had a friend who did something similar to you, only he went to Japan. And he said like, it was great. But the thing that kind of sucked about it's like, everyone there wants to hear English. Did that happen to you? Yeah, I did have quite a few people like roommates and stuff, especially that wanted to practice English with me. Or they could tell when I struggled with Spanish. So they would just switch to English. Um, which can be kind of frustrating if you're trying to learn because you're like, no, let me struggle. Right. <laughs> I need to learn. But um, but yeah, I, I also, I mean, I, I think I had a pretty good mix, but it was it was quite a bit of English too. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Um, well, I had to congratulate you because just recently um your cover of Dream a Dream was on uh the new season of The Boys. Mm-hmm. So yeah. walk, walk me through this. How does one get a song on a TV show? Did you know about it? Did they contact you? Like, how did that all happen? How did that come to be? Yeah, I did. I did know about it. Um, well, I knew about the possibility of it, but I didn't get it confirmed until right before it happened. Um, so how you get a song on film or TV um, is usually via a person who is called a music supervisor. And they're the person basically who's in charge of finding and picking the songs to go in um, that piece of media. Uh, So I actually had in this case, a rare occurrence, Um, a music supervisor reached out to me um, that doesn't, normally happen if right. you're an unknown artist like me so I feel extremely lucky 
And, uh, you know, music supervisors, they're not always easy people to find and get a hold of because if they were, they would be inundated with music submissions from right. artists all over. So to have been found probably thanks to my cover on YouTube um, was, was really amazing. And just a reminder that you never know who's watching, which right. is kind of awesome and kind of scary. Right. So it was literally like a that music, I guess the music supervisor was like in the right place at the right time. I guess so, yeah. Yeah, like yeah, they, that, and that video probably came up when they were searching for covers of that song. That's in, that's insane. That's incredible. Um, well, congratulations on that. That must be super weird to hear your voice on a TV show, knowing that millions of people are watching it and hearing it. I still can't believe it. I like if you would have asked me at any time since I started pursuing a music career what my goals were the first thing I would always say, and I have given this answer multiple times to people, is that I wanted to license a song for film or TV. So to have accomplished one of my major goals and for it to have happened in this way and on this show is more than I could have ever hoped for, honestly. I hope it's not the last time. Right, well, especially for like that song, Dream a Dream, like you had a dream come true, so. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, completely. So, okay. So you finished that goal. What's like, what would you say is your next goal that you would want for your music or YouTube career? Yeah. My next big goal is a placement on a Spotify editorial playlist. Those are the ones that are created by Spotify employees. They're really, really big ones. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure you'll get to that. I mean, you always do an awesome job on your videos and original music. So I, I can definitely see that happening. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and speaking of music, you have a new song coming out uh, this Friday. By the time yes. this video comes, by the time this video comes out, it'll probably already be out. It's called uh, "Where Do We Go From Here," right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What can you tell us about that song? Yeah, "Where Do We Go From Here" is a very reflective, chill, peaceful pop song. It's about taking a road trip with you and your best friend and the sun is warm and it's shining through the car window and you're staring out the window like you're in a music video just watching it go by and really it's a song about being at a crossroads in your life and not being sure where you're going next but instead of feeling stressed or anxious about it uh actually feeling okay about it and knowing okay. that wherever you end up, you'll be okay. And, and just taking it all in because you'll never be in this same moment ever again. All right, cool, cool. I dig that. That's, that's like almost like a perfect road trip song, almost. <laughs> I hope so. I hope it becomes the new soundtrack for all the dramatic <laughs> window well, staring. I actually, I do have a playlist on my Spotify called On the Road, and it's just literally for when I'm taking long car drives. Yeah. So I will, I don't even, I mean, I'm sure the song's great, but I'm going to add it anyways on that playlist. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. That's it's for your day drives. You right. Know, day drives. I think night drives need a separate playlist. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, <laughs> see, I went up to uh, South Carolina with a band one time and we drove like, we left Omaha at 11 PM. So we drew, drove all to the night and oh, by like three or four in the morning, we started singing like Disney tunes and we just <laughs> get into that weird mood where you feel drunk, but you're not drunk because you weren't drinking, but you're just super tired. Whatever so. keeps you awake. Right. It exactly. Might the, it might be yeah. the Disney karaoke. Right. And that's, that's not a bad thing to go to, honestly. No, no, not at all. <laughs> um, so going, kind of going back to your YouTube page, what made you initially say, I want to start a YouTube page or was it something that you were like, I want to, I want to do this. I'm going to pursue it. Or was it more of like a, I'm just going to upload this video and all this kind of happened by accident. It was definitely an, I'm just going to upload this video thing. <laughs> it wasn't something I planned. It came out of me being creatively frustrated, honestly, because I grew up doing all these performing arts things like 
music lessons, musical theater, dance. And when I was in college and when I was studying in Spain, I didn't have any of that. I had no creative outlet and I was miserable, honestly. So I decided to make an opportunity for myself to perform. And I uploaded this video of me singing. And that's still kind of what my channel is, honestly. It's right, just me yeah. performing to the camera as if it were my audience and making that stage for myself. Gotcha. Um, so was it that um, first YouTube video, was it like an over, like all of a sudden you woke up and it was just like a fat couple thousand views and it kept growing or was it an overtime thing? Yeah, it was, it was over time. Um, those first ones, they did get some views, but um, not, not a thousand because I remember at that point, I was excited if the video made it to 2000 views over the course of a couple weeks. And I remember even being like that with Mr. Sandman. I remember seeing a couple of weeks later that video hit 2000 views and being like, oh yeah, it did well. <laughs> but it was actually that video that later for some weird reason got picked up by the algorithm and just started getting recommended to a ton of people. And that was the one that grew my channel at the beginning. People would come click on that video and then they would watch it and they would like it. And a lot of them would also comment like, I thought this was going to be Enter Sandman, the Metallica song. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that part of it was also like that people missed, a fair amount of people misread the title and they thought it was going to be like an acapella of Metallica, which would oh. be very interesting. But that's that not makes what sense. it is. That's, that's probably why it got picked up with the agor algorithm. People searching for that song and then just Metallica fans like or stumbling upon it. <laughs> People thinking it was going to be that and being like, oh, that's super interesting. I got to watch that. Right. And it, and it wasn't that, but they ended up liking it anyway and, and subscribing. So right. that was the one that that kind of kicked things off. Right. I mean, I remember and I think the same thing, it got recommended to me, but it was your cover of For the Longest Time, the Billy Joel song. Mm hmm. That was that was the first one. I was I was impressed. I watched multi reviews and like yeah. By the end of the day, I was a I was a subscriber. So oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> that's so um, nice. So at what point? So then at what point were you like, okay, I'm gonna pursue this YouTube thing. I'm gonna actually go for it. Yeah, it it all ties into actually that story of me being in college and being in the study abroad thing. Um, my visa expired toward the end of that year. And um, I wasn't able to extend that visa. I wasn't able to find a job that would allow me to stay. So I decided it was time for a big change. And at that point, since I had already started the YouTube channel, um, it was small, but it was there. I decided to move to LA and pursue music. Nice. Awesome. And speaking of L LA, I think it's tonight you have a show you're doing, like a small show you're doing. I am. Yeah, I'm playing a, a writer's round, which is uh, I'll just play three songs. So it's not a huge show. OK, um, but it is a very fun thing. It's like kind of mixed in with a couple people um, like me tonight are um, booked in advance. And then there's also open mic, too. Oh, cool. Cool. That's awesome. Well, good luck on it. Thank Which you. Is, yeah, I, I would say, oh, I'm going to be there, but I'm not going to get there in time. So no, <laughs> it's too short notice, but maybe next time. Right. Do you ever plan on doing like like a like a tour ever? Would that be something you would want to do? I would love to. Yeah, I, I really hope that I can someday. Um, it's a little tricky since at this point, um, I am an independent artist, so I don't have um, a label and I don't have a manager or anything like that. I think it would definitely be something I would need some help with. And I would also love to have um, a band of some sort backing me on those shows. So it's not just me um, like playing the piano. So right. I can actually focus on uh, the performance and the singing and 
interacting more with the, right. with the audience because for me when you're stuck behind the piano and oftentimes you're sitting down um you just you can't perform in the same way right yeah i totally get that, that would be my dream to have like a band and to be able to tour around the u.s and, well i mean you got a song Chicago. you got a song on the boys so i don't see why that can't happen so <laughs> <laughs> well that's well you know what i mean we'll see it, it is one of my goals for sure uh, so i hope that i hope that i can make it happen right um so i'm just curious um kind of going back a little to youtube what like what makes you choose like like when you choose a song what makes to cover what makes you want to say okay i'm gonna do this song yeah that's a good question um normally it's something that i hear and i get kind of this spark of inspiration and motivation about doing it i do try to vary the decades a lot so um back to back i try not to do songs from the same decade in a row right which i as i'm sure you've seen i also do a lot of older music yeah yeah these 70s 80s um and i i love that music it just for some reason seems really conducive to my style of covering stuff too with a lot of right companies. yeah so, well i mean like that the music from those decades too was like real music like actual like you know you could hear the instruments and stuff and not so much like what's played on the mainstream where it's all computerized and stuff but no I, I agree it totally fits uh you and your youtube page and actually um i did watch i was watching um a couple of your videos this morning and the one that i remember really kind of stuck out to me um was the the you don't owe me cover mm -hmm. and i was like and i just remember being like damn she does have a great voice <laughs> uh, <laughs> thank you yeah you know, um, there is definitely something to that thing about songs with real instruments, although I definitely don't look down on music that uses, um, you know, digital instruments because I do that in my own stuff too. Right. But for my style of production of the covers, I think that the more organic analog stuff was actually easier for me to reproduce it was right. easier for me to make it sound right because i didn't have the knowledge to recreate an exact sound alike of a modern pop song it was way too complicated for me right so it was also kind of just ended up being what matched better with my skill set and what i was able to do well okay yeah yeah i totally get that was there ever have you ever had a cover where you're just like, maybe you're working on it and you decide to scrap it or you're just like, it's not sounding the right in my head and you just decide to do something totally different. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I have. I don't like to do that. It pains me because there's so much work and time that have been yeah. into it at that point. But there are some that I just haven't been able to make them work. Um, and it's frustrating to make that decision because of course we all know that we're supposed to be uploading consistently to right make the algorithm love us but with my style of content and the way that i work and the way that sometimes things just don't sound right and i don't know how to make them work right the reality is it's really really hard to be consistent so thankfully my audience is super understanding of that and they understand and appreciate that I aim for quality over quantity. Right. Yeah, no, I totally get that because I've done the same thing when I've done covers for my YouTube channel. I'm like, I love the song. I learned how to play it and I'm like, I'm going to cover it and then I record it. And I was like, this sounds awful. I'm not doing this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, it's just not yeah. sounding right. doesn't feel right. I can't, I, whatever they recorded, the original artist caught some magic. I just can't re reproduce that. <laughs> I've definitely had that moment more than once. Yeah. 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 Um, so for like a video production, um, how long does it like usually take for like an average video? I guess I'm more like, I'm curious more of like the 
Mr. S- the Mr. Sandman one and the um mm-hmm. for the longest time ones like stuff like that when there's like the clones of you like yeah. like a video like that how long does that usually take from start to finish including the audio part of it or just the video uh just the video just the video would probably take between three and five hours for the actual shoot um, because during that shoot uh, normally I'm shooting between 10 to 16 different takes and angles. Uh, Mr. Sandman is an exception because that is an older one so it's a lot simpler but nowadays since I usually show instruments and maybe I'll even have a couple different angles of each instrument Um, there's more video that I need to record. And then editing, I would say, usually I take a couple days for it. Um, Probably around 15, 20 hours in the edit from start to finish. Wow. Wow. that's. I've gotten much faster now too, because I have sort of my... um, general formula that I always yeah. use but it's usually at least one full day like eight nine hours of editing plus on a couple different days I you know I go back to it the next day for a few hours check it because you have to sleep on it and yeah you have to sleep the next day if you still like what you did so um I don't just rush it through in in a day or two usually I like to give myself at least three days so I can have a little bit of breathing room right to go back and make super small fixes at the end that I I maybe didn't see at first right yeah I know I think that's important for any artist to just like if they think they have like a really great cool idea to like go turn off your brain for a good 24 hours and come back to it and it does make a difference I mean like I I've edited videos before where I take all day on it or I take a long time doing it and then like I watch it and I miss something or I can make a weird cut and I'm just like how did I miss that so Mm -hmm. yeah yeah would you just have to you have to step away and then you come back with fresh eyes and fresh ears right right um so back to your um original music how would you for someone who may have not um maybe this is the first time of hearing of you how would you uh describe your sound yeah, uh, that's a good question. It's such a hard question to answer, isn't it? Like to answer that question about yourself. Right. Yeah. Um, I would say that my original music is indie pop with a little bit of a sense of humor. Uh, I would say it's a little bit quirky and um, it may deal with serious subjects, but I never take myself too seriously the sound of it and my voice is still like very sweet and light okay cool yeah I I would say that I would I mean I just like it when I can find an artist where I don't know how to describe them because that's just for me makes them more unique to be like I just be like I, I don't know just listen to the song like it's like easier that way <laughs> yeah just listen <laughs> um so with your new song coming out are you planning on releasing a new album or EP not this time. I'll be releasing this song as a single, and then I'll have another song as a single also coming out shortly after. I do have a bunch of songs that are written. They're just not demoed and produced yet. So I think I probably do have enough for another EP, although I don't know exactly what the next thing will be at this point. Okay. All right, cool. Well, um, that was all my question stuff. Uh, if there's anything you want to do a shout out or hype up, no, you can go more than welcome to do that right now. Oh, yeah, sure. Um, thanks for the great questions. It's been fun. And um, if you haven't heard of me before, thanks for watching. And please check out my YouTube channel. Follow me on Spotify and Reburn. And um anticlimactic ending but I guess that's all <laughs> I have to plug I don't know <laughs> yeah no you're fine thank you so much Anne thank you have a good day you too